So then I started looking around at the classrooms in which we were teaching in, classrooms like this. And I thought, you know, if students learn what they do, like classic Dewey, you know, educational perspective here, what are they learning sitting here? What are they actually learning as they sit in these classrooms? So if these walls could talk, what would they say? And so then we just like, we actually did this with the students. I had them kind of look around the room and help me brainstorm, like what is the message of this classroom? Like what is this, what is this classroom telling you about education? And the first thing was that it is that to learn is to acquire information. And so there's, there's nothing else about this room. This, this room clearly doesn't say that it, to learn is to discuss information or to critique information or anything like that. It's clearly about acquiring information. The whole room is designed as an information dump where the professor comes to the front of the room and dumps information on the students. The second thing then is that information is scarce and hard to find. That's why we need these special rooms where you can put the expert in front of the room and dump the information out. And you know, maybe this might have made sense uh, in the past, but it doesn't today. The third thing is to trust authority for good information. So you, the expert at the front of the room is the authority and that you should trust that authority for good information. The fourth thing is that authorized information is beyond discussion. And the way the room says this is that like, these chairs, I think, actually swivel a little bit. So, you know, maybe like these could be good for discussion. Maybe you could at least turn to your neighbor. But these are clearly like fixed chairs facing the front of the room. The whole room is designed simply uh, for this information dump, not for discussion. So then you can sort of summarize this as saying it's all about obey the authority and follow along. But there's something uh, worse about this, and that is that students take these same expectations to those wonderful small classrooms that every once in a while we get to teach, where we have, you know, under 20 students and it's perfect for discussion and this kind of thing. And yet you find, or at least I find, that students are often bringing the expectations of the big classroom into the small classroom and I get a bunch of students who still don't want to discuss, who maybe don't even have, uh, they haven't really learned how to ask the types of questions that are good for discussion and, and this has been a real problem. And the bigger problem here is I started paying attention to what students are saying inside these walls and I'm really, I pay really close attention to questions because I think questions are sort of the catalyst for great learning. And if you have, like a, if you have the right question, you really set your students out to learn and learn and learn. They can just like go on this great quest if they have the right question. But unfortunately, types of questions asked in these walls are things like, how many points is this worth? And you guys are all familiar with these types of questions. How long does this paper need to be? And my least favorite of all, what do we need to know for this test? Because it actually is saying, like, I'm only going to learn so much, okay? So just tell me what I need to know. And, and then the learning sort of stops there. And of course, they forget it the next day. So this is what I call the crisis of significance. They're, students are not finding any meaning in their education beyond just getting a grade. And that is very problematic. So somehow we need to, to get beyond that.